Christian Children Fund, Thailand, Vietnam, and Guatemala. Another important part of my life was that I have sponsored children, through Christian Children Fund longer than both my military, and nuclear careers. It is now called Child Fund International, and has been the most rewarding. I started in 1973, with my first sponsored child, a boy from India. Currently, I have three children all girls, one from Guatemala, one from Zambia, and the other from Thailand. I have sponsored children from India, Guatemala, Thailand, Zambia, and Vietnam. I knew it was the right thing to do, but over the years, I have wondered where the money went, and was it helping? So, when a study tours became available, I looked into participating to see for myself where the money went. My first opportunity to go on a study tour came in 2004, and it was to Thailand. I have sponsored a girl there for some time, and would have liked to see where she lived, and how I was helping. I did not get to meet her, but suddenly had another child assigned to me. This of course generated some new questions that I will try to get answered on the trip. I coupled this trip with one to Vietnam also. I meet the tour group in Bangkok, Thailand, flying there from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam in early November. I stayed in the Windsor Suites Hotel, room 2310. We spent the first day with the national office personnel in Bangkok, and taking in some of the sites around Bangkok. Since, I was already adjusted somewhat to the time zone change, I got up early, and explored the streets near the hotel. It is always good to read up on what to look for, when visiting another country. I used both travel books, and the State Department warnings. That came in handy both in Thailand, and Vietnam. While, walking around, and taking pictures, I was confronted by an individual, who was upset at me about something. Soon a couple of more individuals joined into the confrontation. I was starting to get nervous, and another individual came up who spoke a little English. He identified themselves as security police, but they were not in uniform, and I was not sure. They wanted my camera, which also alarmed me. I started to understand, that they were concerned with what I might be taking photos of. Since, it was a digital camera, I was able to show them what I had taken photos of, and where I had been. This seemed to ease the issue, and they let me continue on my way. Our first location was in Chiang Mai, where we were to visit a project in the nearby hills, visit an orchid farm, trek through the jungle on elephants, ride an ox cart, raft down a river on a bamboo raft. The elephant ride, ox cart, river rafting was great, but the main thing was visiting the project, village. I stayed at the Chiang Mai Plaza Hotel, room 6, 21. The largest tribe is known as the Karen tribe. They built their homes on stilts with wood and thatched roofs. They are also known for their distinctive dress and decorative caps of wool, metal, and woven threads. Their belief system includes animism, Buddhism, and Christianity, depending on the region in which they live. Although the land of the Karen is rugged country, their primary occupation is farming of rice and vegetables and the raising of livestock. When we got to the village, they welcomed us with a welcome dance. It was wonderful, but it was extremely hot, and they were in the sun. Most everyone else were in shade. They showed us around the school village and put on several programs for us. We also ate several meals with them. Some of the sponsors got to meet their children. What, I learned was that most of the money sent for monthly sponsorship goes into a pool of money, that is spent for the needs of the project, and the money goes a long way. Money sent, in addition for occasion as birthdays, or Christmas, went totally to the child. The process seemed to be very efficient, and effective. Welcome dance.
They are provided with school books, uniforms, and paper. School lunches are also provided to the children using produce from the community vegetable gardens and a fish farm. Sweaters and blankets are distributed during the cool season. Occupational training is arranged to boost family incomes, and savings groups are promoted among youth and adults. Some dancers in their classroom and some sponsors. A sponsor meeting is sponsored child. From Chiang Mai, we flew to Ubon Rat Chatani where we were treated with a fair for the children. The different groups showed local products, music, dance, theater, and money-making activities that helped them at their projects. The governor for that state greeted us, and some of it was broadcast on TV and live on radio. It was a great way for sponsors, parents, and sponsored children to get to know each other. Governor speech and local news station. This event was being conducted over two days, 8th and 9th of November. 2547. Check photo above. That is based on the Thai calendar, and I could be wrong about November. By our calendar, it was 8th and 9th of November 2004. Many of the project leaders and families greeted us at the city's cultural center and a special children and families fair. Sponsored children greeted us and shared their culture through music, dance, and art. Everything was within a short walk, so you could try it all. Food, drink, crafts, dance, music, plays, and information. It was very enlightening, and it was easy to see that the children were having fun. These girls made some of the most wonderful, refreshing fruit drinks. You can see that everything was exotic and fresh. These girls had some incredibly unique treats that they would share with you. This was the end of the day for us. They would continue their fair for another day. They gave us a very warm send off. It was a shame that we had to go. The next day was the day that I was to meet my sponsored child. They had a big day scheduled for us tomorrow. We would start out after breakfast and meet our child, then board a bus to ride to a national park, then eat lunch on the Mekong River, travel back to hotel where we spent some time together, and rest and a formal dinner before having to say goodbye. My first meeting with Rin and her mother. Other sponsors were also meeting their sponsored child in the background. They had just arrived from a five-hour trip from where they lived. She was not ready to meet with me. I was squatted to not be as intimidating, but that did not work. They warned us that some of the children might be afraid. I had only been sponsoring Rin for a couple of months. When I signed up for the study tour. I was sponsoring another child who left the program prior to the trip. Therefore, I was assigned a new child who I was meeting for the first time. It also did not help that her friends told her that I was there to steal her. She was shy and scared at first, and it took a while, but she finally came around. She is 20 years old as I am writing this, and still a sponsored child. She is still continuing her education. The trip was also written about in several of my company's communication outlets. I might not be able to change the world, but I can help one child at a time, and hope that I can improve their life through support and education. My time spent in Thailand showed me that it was definitely worth it. After the dinner at the Lathong Hotel, ox cart. I know I am driving on the wrong side. Bamboo rafting. Elephant trek through a teak forest. When on the study tour to Thailand, I asked Gary Duncan arrange the study tours if they ever have study tours to Guatemala. 
I have had several sponsored children there for many years. He said that there was none planned, because of the situation in Guatemala War. The Guatemalan Civil War, ran from 1960 to 1996. It was fought between the government of Guatemala, and various leftist rebel groups supported chiefly by ethnic Maya indigenous people, and Ladino peasants, who together make up the rural poor. The government forces of Guatemala have been condemned for committing genocide against the Maya population of Guatemala during the Civil War, and for widespread human rights violations against civilians. The Guatemalan government was backed by the U.S. government, and C. I. A. My current sponsored child was Sylvia Maribel Kojol and Misteco, who was born on February 22, 1992. My sponsorship with Sylvia started when she was just a baby, so my early letters from her were written by her father, then her older two sisters. When she was old enough, we began receiving letters from her. It was great to get the letters, but later I learned they did not paint the picture of everything that was happening in Guatemala. This was the first photo that I had received of Sylvia, who goes by Mary now. She had two older sisters, and would have an additional two more sisters. Consequently, it was a family of five girls. In all of the photos, Sylvia would have her hand raised. But, in 2005 CCF announced that they would have a study tour going to Guatemala, which happened in January of 2006. My wife, and I both went on this trip. It was just under a three-hour flight from Miami International Airport, and one time zone change. We arrived in Guatemala City on the 4th of January, and went through custom-like VIPs before arriving at our hotel for the night. The next morning, we went to the national office for CCF Guatemala. We met many of those who would be with us on the trip, and learned a lot about how it works in Guatemala. We then got ready to head out to our first project. As we were boarding our tour vans, several shots rang out and some officers were chasing a man down the street. I was already in the van, and had a good view, since it was parked on the street. Two was talking to others on the sidewalk, and thought that it was just fireworks. She did not understand why they were rushing her onto the van. All of this was happening in front of the national office, which is right across from the U.S. Embassy. We then got on our way, driving right past them taking him into custody. His face was bloody, but he was walking. Chattakaj Project, near Solala. When we arrived at the project, a huge crowd was there to meet us. They had a display of most of the local produce, the mission, cultural products, dancing, and music. This again showed me how the monthly donations help the children, and the community. We spent three to four hours here, so we got a really good idea about how they functioned. This little girl, and some of her friends danced for us. From here we continued on our journey to Lake Atitlan. Lake Atitlan is a natural wonder, of crystal blue water, set against a backdrop of three 10,000-foot-high volcanoes, Toilamon, Atitlan, and San Pedro, whose slopes are covered by pine, and wild leaf forests that provide a refuge for endangered plants and animals. Volcanic activity began in the Lake Atitlan area, about 11 to 12 million years ago. The present-day stratovolcanoes, and caldera represent the most recent of four periods of volcano growth, and caldera collapse. This recent period of activity began, about 1.8 million years ago. A large explosive eruption about 84,000 years ago formed the most recent Atitlan caldera. We then continued our trip on to Lake Atitlan, and our hotel where we will share a day with our sponsored children, in a very festive environment. This is a photo of meeting Sylvia for the first time. She was 14. After sharing greeting, and talking about each other, we went out on the grounds to enjoy the afternoon together. From the photo, you can see how nice day it was with the volcano, and lake in the background. 
In the photo was the project's manager, Sylvia's mother, translator, Sylvia, and two. Gary Duncan was in the background behind Sylvia. There were many games, and activities that we were able to do. Enjoying the clown's act, even though it was in Spanish. Sylvia loved it, I could tell by her laughter. It was a beautiful day with a lake in our background. They had clowns that entertained us, and yes, I did get up on stage, with the clowns, and they made fun of my pronunciation of words in Spanish, and everyone laughed. The had children danced a local dance about growing crops. In for the sponsors. I was invited to dance with one of the little girls, who entertained us. After the performances, we went back inside to our table, and shared more information. One thing that I learned was that it was difficult for them to complete school because of the cost. In Guatemala, they are only required to attend grades 1 through 6 which was at no cost except for books, and supplies, which is difficult for some. After grade 6, they had to pay all cost even tuition. They could not afford to pay for all five going to school at the same time, so they alternated years. I asked them to look into what I could do to help. I was also feeling sick. It just started to come on as we were sitting at the table. I was getting moments of chills, and then moments of fever. I tried to hold it together. I managed to do so, but as soon as they were gone, I collapsed in my room, and did not go to dinner with the group that night. I stayed under a blanket, and sweated out of my system. The next day was better. I said that it was because of some pills I took, my wife said it was because of what I ate the day before. Not sure which, but it is over, so all is well. So, the departure was not what I wanted, but who wanted it? They all left the hotel, in pickup trucks carrying all of the children, and families. Typical transportation in Guatemala. We left the lake, and went to Antigua where we spent the day exploring it. Exceptionally beautiful city, that I will return to many times. It is also not far from the city that Sylvia lives, and was where her oldest sister worked, I did not know at this time. The next day we were to visit the project, Corazon de los Niños, Heart of the Children, in a nearby town. This project was located in the city, where the other one was in the countryside. This project was also remarkably close to Sylvia's project and town. Entrance from the street into the project. Again, we were welcomed with open arms, and they were happy to tell us about and show us their project. Children were everywhere having a good time. We saw the different programs that they had on site. Medical, dental, pharmacy, and other supports. Project Courtyard. It was another great study tour, put on by CCF Gary Duncan, which helped us sponsors visit our children, and understanding how we are helping them. When they, uh, when they are the first time here, we have a contract with the family, with the children, and right now we have the, the contract, all the affiliated children. Several months after the visit, I received word on what I could do to help Sylvia and her sisters to finish their education. It turned out that what was insurmountable for their mother was something that I could do. This will start a process, where I help them complete their education's goals. 
It would not be the last time that I visit Guatemala. Our sponsored child's in Vietnam name is Men, and she lives in the northern part above Hanoi. I did not get to visit her, but two did. The one issue that we had with Vietnam, was that all donation went to the project as a whole, and no individual gifts. I understood their reason, but that did not allow us to give her gifts, and meet specific needs. Only during a visit, could you give her, and the family specific gifts. Men lived in a remote village scattered on the mountainsides in a mountainous province in northern Vietnam. Men lived with their parents, and brothers in a stilt house with bamboo walls, and a tile roof. Her parents are subsistence farmers whose livelihood depends on cultivating rice in the field, and on the mountainsides. However, the rice harvest is frequently affected by the uncertain weather, forcing the family to survive most years on the summer-autumn crops. The school in men's commune is located in the commune center, but many children have to walk four or five kilometers on rough roads to attend. To observe this because she was meeting them at the school, and first saw her coming over the mountain road, path. Men aspires to be a doctor, loves to sing, and her favorite subjects are literature, and grammar. The photo show how some of the money is spent by building irrigation for the fields, to help them be able to grow more crops, and make more money to help improve their quality of life. The photo shows men with some of her friends in two. They shared some snacks while they got to know each other. My next trip to Guatemala, was in 2007 with Dwayne Thompson, and it would not be part of a study tour. We will be traveling as sponsors responsible for all of our activities, but with some help from CCF Project. They picked us up at the airport, took us to our hotel, took us to both projects, and took us back to the airport, which we compensated them for. We stayed in Antigua, because both projects were located near it. Dwayne's sponsored child lived in the town of Santa Maria de Jesus, and Sylvia lived in Alotenango. This time, I will meet the entire family, the five sisters, mother, and a little niece. The girls now range from 11 to 19. They were showing Dwayne, and I around their town. This photo was taken in the church courtyard. Their town is located between Volcanoes Agua, and Fuego. Fuego is an active volcano, but was quiet today. Today was my birthday, and the birthday of the oldest Shidi. She was working, when we had cake at lunch, but she got some later. I also got to show Dwayne some of my dancing skills. He was impressed. I had told him about the first time I was in Guatemala, and that shots were fired across from the U.S. Embassy. We did not know it, but it was their custom to set off fireworks for birthdays. When they went off, Dwayne's first thoughts was gunfire, but when no one reacted to it, he realized it was fireworks. This was our vehicle while in Guatemala. Yes, there were 12 riding in the front and back of the truck. One thing was that on any of the roads you would not travel fast, especially in town. One of the places we visited was Sylvia's school, where the principal showed us around. This was one of the better schools, but was very sparse based on our standards. I guess that brings me to a topic about Guatemala, that is quite different than the United States, at least I think so. But a small number of individuals have all the money, and control, and an exceptionally large portion of the country is just struggling to get by. The computers in the classroom were incredibly old, but to my surprise would cost more than a brand new one in the US. Most things that we looked at in a department store and a hardware store cost more, and sometime even the quality was less. The people of Guatemala were at a distinct disadvantage. But what they did have was family, immediate and extended, and they were happy. We were to travel to Santa Maria Jesus, the next day, and meet with Dwayne's sponsored child. 
Santa Maria Jesus is higher up on the side of the Agua Volcano. The CCF, project again picked us up at the hotel, and off we went. Dwayne's sponsored child was a boy, but he too had many brothers, and sisters some but not all were in this photo. Twin girls were also in his family. They showed us the town, their project, and shared a meal that was prepared by the grandmother. Dwayne spent time getting to know the family, and they asked Dwayne many questions. They put on quite a show and everyone was there enjoying it. Yes, both Dwayne and I danced for the crowd. There were photos but are not shared here. Or, will, I? San Francisco El Grande, is a church in Antigua, Guatemala, and one of the most frequented sanctuaries by the local population, because of the shrine of Peter of St. Joseph Patanker, Santo Hermano Pedro. The site was partly destroyed during the 1773 earthquake, and has been reconstructed in parts, but areas of ruin still remain. We both shared some time with both of our families. We finished out the day together at a chicken restaurant at one long table. After dinner, everyone went to the playground, attached to the restaurant. Everyone went down the slides, and I mean everyone. We had one thing yet to do. Climb a volcano. Okay, Dwayne climbed it, I rode a horse to the top. But as we were standing on hot rock, and watching visible lava flows, we looked up at what appears to be the volcano bulging open, and about to bust, thinking this could very well be our last trip. You would think that going down the volcano would be easier than going up, but I proved that wrong. I should have taken the horse. By the time, I got off the volcano it was dark. Yes, I was the last one. Yes, I did fall a number of times. But I made it, and boy did I sleep well that night. But when I woke up the next morning, there were rocks in my bed, and I could hardly move. I guess, I picked up the rocks every time I hit the ground. When I got home, my wife told me that I was black, and blew all over my backside. I also had to see a knee specialist, and almost had to have surgery. Yes, it was worth it, and I will do it again. But I will ride the horse, both ways so that I can enjoy my time on the volcano. Dwayne also went on a study tour to Zambia to visit his child there. I returned once more to Guatemala in 2008, this time I took my parents, and decided that I would rent a vehicle to get around in. Since Sylvia was no longer in a project, I picked up another child from CCF, who lived in Guatemala. She lives near Lake Atitlan at a high altitude over 7,000 feet. Lillian comes from an indigenous family that speaks the Spanish, and Quiche languages. When I first met her, she only spoke Quiche and we required two translators, Quiche to Spanish, and, Spanish to English. This made for some interesting conversations. The high altitude in their home was not sealed, so they had to deal with some very cold temperatures. She spent a lot of her time taking care of the smaller children, boys, and there were also twins. Even with her young age, she had to take on many adult responsibilities, seems common in Guatemala. Her family have had many more difficulties, and she was in need of help. She had the desire to become a teacher, but because of responsibilities, and cost of school it was going to be difficult. I will try to help. They showed us around the project, we exchanged gifts, and we went to a local restaurant, in Santa Clara, for lunch. We had a very enjoyable lunch, and gained more information about each other. Because of the language barrier, and Lillian's shyness, it was sometimes difficult to get her to speak, but her mother provided all of the information. Because my parents came, I took advantage of the extra luggage, and was able to bring a lot of needed items for Lillian, and her family. The boys grabbed the balls, and other toys, you could see the excitement in their eyes. We also brought some things for the project, but some items were stolen from that bag at the airport. That was a shame, because they sure could have used the items stolen. When it was time for Lillian and her family to leave, they bundled up all the items, and carried them on their heads. Lillian's mother had a much larger bundle. The boys were not much help, except for a toy, or ball. 
even though it was not far in distance from Antigua, 30 miles as the crow flies, but it took over 4 hours to travel to the lake, long winding roads. We were also traveling back to Antigua that night, which put us into the hotel at an extremely late hour. I do not think my parents want to do it more than once. And when I asked them if they wanted to go again, they declined. To return to Vietnam in 2009. She made another trip up north to see men. Everyone had met before, so this visit was easier on everyone. As you can see from the photo, men has grown up. She is already taller than two. Thu was able to take them to a local department store, and get some items for men, and her friends. They had a great time shopping. They also ate snacks, and talked about how men would be leaving soon for school. She has reached the grade now that cannot be accommodated by the local school. She will have to travel to a larger city, and stay in a dorm to continue her education. She had some anxiety about leaving home, but her and her parents know that education, is the only way to improve their situation. Two made sure that she had some new clothes for school. Meeting with Lillian for the second time. I visited another CCF, project this time with my sister. This one was in Solola, and was where I meet Lillian. Even with writing letters back, and forth, sometimes you do not learn everything, and when double translation is required, it is difficult for some topics. One is that their culture is not the same as ours, and the area where Lillian resides is very remote. But I found out two things, I did not know. Even at Lillian young age, she was now married, and has a child. Lillian, and her child at a chicken restaurant. She was indeed happier than she was before, and even being shy, she was more talkative, and grateful for our help. I took this opportunity, to take them to a local grocery store, and let them get what they needed. We were able to get them enough supplies to last them some time. This will make it easier for them. She still wants to be a teacher, and continues to work in that direction. All in all, the trip to meet Lillian, and visit at a project was good for me, and showed my sister what it was all about. I also found the following in ACCF, annual report, when reading through it. When, I turned the page all of a sudden, I saw Lillian, and my photo on page 11. I was surprised, but whenever you go on a visit, you sign paperwork that they might use your photo, or words in their literature. I was happy that they used it, because I support what they are doing for children.